But Solomon didn't know the purpose of that wealth. Otherwise, we would have been building more and more temples for Jesus. More and more temples for the Lord. But Solomon went wild. Having lost the sense of purpose for that wealth. Israel is not one city. Why not to build a temple in every city? In the same city, Solomon built a thousand shrines. For the gods and goddesses of his strange wives. Why do I call it a thousand? He had 700 wives and then 300 concubines. And the Bible summed them up as strange wives. Like my friend of blessed memory, Miles Moreau, will say, when purpose is lost, abuse is inevitable. So, God's word was corrupted for lack of purpose. And Solomon began to worship in shrines. And he built it on the hills in the approach to Jerusalem. Here we are. We are worshippers of gods and goddesses of my strange wives. That's why we need a sense of purpose. For the dimension of where that is coming to visit the church of Christ, we need a sense of purpose. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I have no shadow of doubt that this video is going to be a blessing to you and your ministry. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, click the bell notification, and give me a thumbs up if you really like this video. Let's watch the full video next to this one. The Queen of Sheba was the Queen of the World, as it were came calling in chapter 10 and verse 4 to 7. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom, because there was no question he asked without an answer, and the house that he had built, and the meat of his table, and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, and his cup bearers, and his ascent, by which he went up unto the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. Amen. Amen. A spirit went. Or a spirit departed. Now, and she said to the king, it was a true report oh, that I had in my own country, my own land, of thy art and thy wisdom. How be it? I believe not the words that there is nothing like that on the earth. Until I came. And my eyes have seen it. And behold, the half was not told me of their wisdom and prosperity which exceeded the fame which I had. That was the dimension of wealth at his disposal. What's the capital purpose for this world? My cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. My city, Zechariah chapter 1, verse 17, through prosperity shall ye be spread abroad. Okay, since God has the silver and the gold, what is he looking for? He's looking for channels to pass them through. He's busy looking for who? Channels. Faithful stewards who will use it for his purpose to pass it through. Thank you, Jesus. And if you have not been faithful in your righteous mammon, who shall commit to your trust? So he's looking for who to commit it to. The true riches. Heaven's riches. Who will put it in your hand? Since you are not faithful in handling the kind of one in your hand, who will put the true riches in your hand? You will abuse it. You will abuse it. Luke 16 verse 11. Can I tell you one more time? I am not... A preacher of prosperity. Neither am I a teacher of prosperity. I am a messenger of prosperity. Get back home and make my people rich. Clean mandate. Show them the way to their wealthy place. Leave each one to decide whether to take that route or not. In Psalm 66 and verse 12. 
The Bible talks about the wealthy place of God's people. That has caused men to ride over our hearts because of our ignorance, our heads. We went through fire and through water because we don't know how to get out of it. But thou has brought us finally out into our wealthy place. Praise God. So I'm welcoming you to a wealthy place. Amen. I'm welcoming you to your wealthy place. Amen. I'm welcoming you to the realm of irreversible wealth. Amen. I'm welcoming you to the realm where no man's hand will be relevant. Amen. No man's hand. So we saw that dimension of word visited Solomon from the altar of sacrifice. Train us the highway to our wealthy place in the covenant. I'll be showing you in the course of this month the secret behind the status of that tiny nation called Israel. A nation of concentration of giants in all fields of human endeavor. That generational blessing came from the altar of sacrifice. I call it transgenerational breakthrough. Don't let the size of Israel confuse you. It's one of the strongest nations on the earth. Not by religious uh, right, but by the power, the breakthrough power of the altar of sacrifice. There are people here today, as God opens your eyes, your generations after you will be swimming in dimensions of breakthroughs after the order of Israel. Amen. Please know that the end time church is ordained a reigning church. Sit down at my right hand, Psalm 110, verse 1 to 3, until I made the enemies their first two. He said, the Lord shall send the rod of his strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of the enemies. And watch. From Psalm 22, I mean, Proverbs 22, verse 7, he said, The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. So God is out to enrich the end time church, thereby. Empowering us to rule in the midst of our enemies. The greatest names, whether anybody likes it or not, in the world of finance, before Jesus comes, will be domiciled in the church. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. From the north to the south, the east to the west of the world. Yes. The greatest names. The greatest names. The captains of our nines, industry, commerce, are Greek, shall be domiciled in Zion. Amen. Because the church is ordained a ruling church before Jesus returns. Glory to God. Amen. Sit down at my right hand until I make the enemies their fools too. Hmm. Their people shall be willing the day of their power. To be empowered for supernatural wealth, the kind of world has never seen before. This is why the end time church is ordained a wealthy church for the purpose of serving God and the interests of his kingdom. Remember also that, and this gospel, Matthew 24, verse 14, of the kingdom shall be preached among all nations. A witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. The word nations includes tongues, tribes, kindred. Every part of this earth will have opportunity for the gospel, to hear the gospel before Jesus comes. And this is driven 
by heavy financial resources, which God is looking for, which channels to pass through. That's not, and if there's no channel, he passes by himself. You remember in Isaiah 59, verse 16, he said, I wonder there was no intercessor. And he saw that there was no man. I wonder that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness. He sustains him. But I know we'll find many of us Amen. who will stay true to it to the end. Amen. Just enjoy being a channel of the release of his blessings in advancing his kingdom. These people say, Haggai chapter 1, the time is not come. The time that the house of the Lord should be built. And God answered, is it time for ye to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie waste? Now therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have so much, but look at, you brought in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe you, but there is no warm. I need an honor which is honor which is to put into a bag with holes. Don't say the Lord. Really think. Sit and find out. What's going on? He said, my friend, go up to the mountain and bring wood and build this house. Then I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified, said the Lord. He said, you look for much. You are chasing after the wind. And lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why? Said the Lord of hosts. Because of my house that is waste. And ye run everyone to his own house. Now, what happened? Therefore, the heaven over you is stay from you. You can't walk in kingdom wealth without a big heart for God and the interest of his kingdom. You can't. It will be short lived. 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 It will be short-lived. It will be short-lived. God forbid. You never tell the story in your life when God used to prosper you. Amen. You never tell that story in your life. Amen. The time when God used to bless me. That won't happen. Amen. Abraham returned from the altar of sacrifice with a release of sworn blessings. Upon his generations after him. By myself, I have sworn. So the altar of sacrifice is the altar of sworn blessing. When God swears a blessing on a man, his case is settled. Because you have done this thing, you have not withheld your son, your only begotten son from me. Therefore, in blessing, I will bless thee. In multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. And as the sun which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Where well, in thy seed shall all the nations, all the nations, men of global impact, all the nations, your tiny business today becoming a household name, household name worldwide, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because ye have obeyed my voice. That's the breakthrough power of sacrifice. The sacrifice of David towards the building of the temple is amazing. He just piled up in thousands of silver and gold. Sacrifice. Is in the power to make great. So he stepped into greatness from the altar of sacrifice. First Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 3. Moreover, because I have set my affection to the house of my God, I have of my own proper good. Now listen to me, and I think I need to say this. One dime of this ministry money has never missed its road to my house.
God does not bless crooks. Praise God. This church never paid our children's school fees once forever. There's none in school today. Amen. Now listen. I've not drawn a dime, neither my wife, from books since we started publishing. One. I buy my books to give as gifts. I don't know whether they sell the CDs or they give them out for free. No. We have a CD factory. I've never stepped in there. Except one day they told me that's where the place is. Of my own proper good, not, not, not gimmicks. Proper. Each one we have is proper good. Yes. Don't mix your company money to your free spending. You, you kill the company. And it's dangerous for anyone to be spending God's money and be claiming his money. These are things they are not used to. And so they are confused. Okay, how is he blessed? Go and ask God. Covenant practice empowers ordinary people for supernatural wealth. Covenant practice. He said, I will open the heavens when you are putting your little where you are to promote my kingdom. Amen. Amen. Somebody's story is changing. Amen. I, I can't be surprised that people have gone searching. Okay, where are they getting money from? Are they printing money? <laughs> Amen. Greater surprises are with them. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Greater surprises. I promise you, greater surprises. And you will enjoy it. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. So he gave thousands of gold, thousands of silver, and he began to speak prophetically. It is in thy hand to make great. So the altar of sacrifice turns giants out of people. You can read that when you get home. Grace that makes great flows among others from the altar of sacrifice. Engaging the altar of sacrifice is gateway to a wealthy place in Christ. Remember, it's a once and again covenant demand. Once and again, as God advances you, you are, you are, you are required to increase the worth of your sacrifice for the purpose of building this enormous glorious little house hallelujah Amen. this is why the altar of sacrifice is the altar of Torah Psalm 126 verse 1 when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. There was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. We became the talk of the town. The Lord has done great things for them. And we began to answer with all boldness in Christ, making our boast in the covenant keeping God. Yes, the Lord has done great things for us. We are all, we are glad. We have been telling you before, you don't want to hear. The Lord has done great things for us. We are all, we are glad. Oh, do you get it? Sad when God does great things, amen. You should have somebody weeping when his son made first class at convocation. They say, Why is it? Where did he make first class? I can he make first class. Nobody makes first class in our family. Please remove first class, give him God. <laughs> no, that would be fresh madness. <laughs> when your child makes first class. You do as if you are the one who made it. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> if they say the following people are not graduating, and they mention your, your, your name, you do as if you are not present. 
<laughs> you are going to the toilet and walk away. <laughs> now let me conclude with this humorous story. When we were in primary school, they called the first three. They said the following people. <laughs> what if you did me? <laughs> so as they call them, they put them on the table. They put them under the table. So when they call somebody that he failed, they just took <laughs> They'll be looking for him. <laughs> so when you find them talking about you because of the good hand of God upon you, yes. Hallelujah. Only a madman weeps when he makes a good game. You just march and then. Make them sadder. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. How many caught something tonight? Woo! Give the Lord a free hand of prayer. <laughs> Lift up your right hand and give God thanks. Give God thanks for the word. If anything came across to you, give God thanks for the word. If anything came across to you, give God thanks for the word. Give God thanks for the word. Thank you for the word tonight, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Precious name, we have prayed. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. You know, our mission has been flying since 1996. None of our parents entered the plane once. It's not ours, and they are not church officials. Mm. Somebody listen to me. Yes. Covenant practitioners are very sensitive. Mm. So when I now tell them that, what will I say? Is my plane or is our plane? It's ours. We give it to our mission. But they are not officials of the mission. I would rather charter three planes to carry them to where they go with my money. Not one boss of this ministry was allowed to be in their barriers when they passed. Why? It's not just barrier, it's our barrier. I give a stand warning. Covenant people are sensitive people. They are not bragadabra braga, braga, people. Somebody's going places. Amen. And you are the one. Amen. Stand to your feet. Thank you for watching the video to this far. I have a book for you in the description and title. Get this book from Amazon or send a free donation to the number on the screen and I'll forward a soft copy to you wherever and find yourself. Always remember, a winners never quit, a waiters never win. Yes, you can.